Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as right now we're going to spin out with this guy, who is of course the latest Diaclone homage in the Takara Tomy Masterpiece line. Very exciting! Now before we begin, it's worth mentioning that this guy comes courtesy of tfsource.com, so I'll go ahead and put a link to their site and of course their listing for this dude in the video description below, so as soon as we're done here, if he takes your fancy, you could go ahead and pick him up straight away. We'd also really appreciate it if you could drop me a like for today's video, that would really help me out and help it to get seen by more people, and maybe uh, a little subscription on the channel. If if you haven't done that already, that's always a, a nice little thing too, isn't it? Would uh, would really appreciate it. So just who is Spin Out anyway? Well, he's a, a bit of a newly named thing for Transformers. Well, kind of anyway. Uh, but of course, originally the toy was the very first car robots release in the Diaclone line. That was pre-Transformers back in the 80s. Uh, and actually, the original toy was first released in 1982 two years ahead of Transformers in 1984, and uh, yeah, it was the red version of Sunstreaker, which you see represented here in masterpiece form for the first time. Yes, you see, back in Diaclone there wasn't actually a yellow release of Sunstreaker, or the toy that would become Sunstreaker at all. It was known as Number One Countach LP500S, and was only released in red initially, and then in white police theme deco, which of course we've seen in the Masterpiece line uh, under the name of Cordon. Uh, and then interestingly, when it came time to become Transformers, uh, they took the mold and made it yellow, and of course turned it into Sunstreaker. Although originally that character was going to be called Spin Out, which of course now is the name of this masterpiece release. And uh, of course they've done a, a Generation Selects version as well, because you know you wait 35 years for one Spin Out and then two come along at once. Why not? All of that is to say that this is a very exciting new release. Now I'm a big fan of the original yellow version of this mold, and indeed Corden as well, who's just fantastic. And uh, yeah, no, I really cannot wait to check this one out today. So very, very excited indeed. Who doesn't love a good count, eh? Now, as with most Masterpiece car bots, this is an officially licensed product, hence the Lamborghini logo that you can see very nicely adorning the box just there. And of course, the back of the box is the usual Masterpiece fare as well. Lots of promo shots there, all showing the toy off to its best. Uh, and I really love how this packaging has remained so consistent over the years, considering that, uh, you know, the Masterpiece line is 18 years old now. Just incredible. But uh, really, the packaging has not changed all that much. But we're not going to keep talking about the box any longer because now it's time to check out that toy. And this is one that I've got to say I'm so pleased to see finally happen because it's been a while since we had a good old Diaclone homage in the Masterpiece line, eh? So let's get that clamshell open and of course in the box you've got lots of nice contents. You've got the toy itself which looks absolutely fabulous. We'll check that out in just a moment. You've got his little gun just there, little handheld blaster, uh, larger gun as well. You've got this piece which actually first came with Cordon which is, uh, you know, one of those kind of clip-on pieces that goes on his wrist actually, you can kind of stow his hand away uh, and click that on in reference to the original toy. Uh, and you've got a couple of wing mirrors there as well. And of course also in the box is a little baggie with the character car instructions and a set of stickers. How exciting is that? Now what I think is especially cool here is that they've actually given you two sets of stickers. Now this one here is I believe the one for Spin Out himself and of course you've got some little logos just here, uh, you know decals and things that make him look much more like the original Diaclone toy. Uh, you've also got this Countach uh, logo just there which splits and goes on his spoiler so that's pretty cool and then this piece which goes on his chest that is all designed to make it look like that original red Sunstreaker figure from the Diaclone line. Uh, then over here you've got the same decals again and some red pieces uh, and if I'm not mistaken I think that these are actually for Sunstreaker. Uh, so if you wanted to give Sunstreaker a kind of a more original Transformers look as well, uh, his original G1 toy, uh, that toy interestingly the original Sunstreaker toy did have red decals on it and uh, the the theory anyway or the kind of purveying theory is that that was a bit of a holdover from Diaclone and that actually uh, because the Sunstreaker toy was originally going to be red in Transformers it had red decals it was obviously a bit of a last minute change uh, to yellow but they kept the red decals anyway as, as you'll know if you own the original toy uh, and I think anyway that you could probably use these to make your Masterpiece Sunstreaker look more like that original toy if indeed that's your jam. But of course we'll come to Sunstreaker a little bit more later and we'll do some comparisons and stuff today no doubt, uh, but for now let's turn our attention to this dude because he's looking very very nice right out the box uh, indeed. Absolutely love that red uh, and I don't know there's something about that super tuning contact with the extra intakes just here that I've always thought just looks fantastic in red. I just really you know I don't know what no matter what design it is you know whether it's the generation selects I think that looks better in red. Uh, I've always loved the, seeing the original G1 toy in red 
uh, never own one but it just looks fabulous and um, you know I, I don't know whereas actually interestingly I do prefer traditionally again the sideswipe variations of uh, the designs over the years in yellow the kind of tiger track colors um, so yeah interesting one but I think it looks great I mean just get a load of that it's absolutely glorious this to me is everything in terms of transformers it's just a really fun fantastic looking alt modes like this are just absolutely everything it's uh, just gorgeous paint chrome everything wonderful anyway as i've already kind of alluded to the kantash is a real kind of signature model of the transformers line has been since day one obviously with the likes of sunstreaker sideswipe you know and quite a few others as well there are loads of them and uh, this guy just it's breathtaking honestly I, I really do think actually that this design this mold uh, is better than the the mp12 sideswipe mold actually in alt mode i just think it's so good i mean just get a load of this thing from every angle it's just glorious absolutely love it now of course this is as i already mentioned the kind of super tuning mode with the extra intakes on top and uh, kind of a couple of little bits like these uh, little rear tail lights that uh, look a little bit different we will get him into his kind of more traditional countash mode in just a bit but i'm having too much fun appreciating it as is out of the box now getting into the detail of this guy of course here on the front you've got his little license plate which says cr01 that's a, a direct reference to his diaclone roots that we've already talked about uh being car robots 01 the first toy in the line there you go then of course just above that you've got this tiny little emblem which is of course is meant to be the lamborghini logo on his bonnet just there then of course we have a very nice little molded windscreen wiper just there and uh, coming out a bit you've got his uh, uh, wing mirrors as well which I know I said oh, you've got a little extra set in the box but he does come with them already on the toy so that's nice really really nice set of silver wheels as well just there that looks fab really catches the light beautifully and uh, not rubber tires unfortunately which I'm sure you know is going to disappoint some people uh, although if you do collect the Takara Temi Masterpiece line you're probably used to it by now but yeah none of the none of the car bots have rubber tires it just is what it is. There's a really nice layer of paint on this guy and there's kind of a lot of debate sometimes about whether these car bots, Masterpiece car bots, are indeed painted or not and they are uh, typically speaking now this guy is and uh, it's it's not like the most obvious coat of paint ever but it does give it a real shine in hand and uh, I think looks looks really really good of course you have more obvious paint applications in areas such as the back just here you know where you've got bits of black on top of the red and things like that and uh, a couple of red highlights as well here and there I think just to kind of you know uh, complement the main body a couple of really tiny little silver accents as well such as areas such as the handles uh, just there which is you know it's it's interesting because that that to me is like a real extra mile thing you know they don't have to do that they don't have to paint the handles on the doors but um there you go but of course the real showstopper here is that chrome because not only do you have that really very attractive spoiler just there at the back uh, but you also have this very nice set of intakes that i've already mentioned and i just think they're I, I don't know i kind of keep saying it but just really breathtaking the chrome overall anyway looks uh, just beautiful sadly it's not entirely without fault i mean mine does have this little scuff just here on the side it's very very small i mean it, you can see it in hand i have already clocked it and uh, that's a little bit unfortunate i don't have that on sunstreaker or cordon from memory anyway we'll have a look in a bit but um yeah this slightly annoying but um hey ho apart from that one blemish it all seems to be in pretty good shape on the whole and uh, just looks just spectacular <laughs> i keep saying it i keep kind of raving about it but honestly woof then on the back you've got some little painted exhausts and of course that cr01 license plate on the rear as well uh, and a little kind of splodges of uh, and these little splodges of paint which you know are kind of meant to represent the countash logo uh, they don't necessarily hold up to scrutiny but uh, they're there nonetheless so yeah it's pretty spectacular all things considered and obviously i knew what i was in for with this guy i mean i do own the mold twice over as i've already mentioned but still it's uh, yeah it's it's quite something and you know all credit to takara tomi because you know when they really want it to they knock it out of the park don't they I mean, find me a third party toy that straight out of the box looks quite as uh, blinging and as impressive as this. And, uh, you know, it's not to say that there aren't some amazing looking third party toys. Of course there are. There are, there are plenty. But there's just, I don't know, when Takara Tomi get it right, when they do it well, like this thing presents right now, it's just spectacular. Uh, hopefully it'll hold up to transformation and whatever else, but uh, but yeah, pretty stunning stuff. Now, of course, there are a couple of little gimmicks with this guy, which you can utilize in his alt mode. Uh, the first of which is really, really easy to do, and that's that you can mount his weapon, his kind of little hand blaster on uh, just between his intakes, just there. Uh, and that looks uh, really, really quite nice. Yeah, I absolutely dig how that looks. It really catches the light superbly well and really kind of works with the chrome to kind of complete the overall look. I just think it's, uh, it's 
beautiful. I don't know, it just looks really purposeful mounted there in between those intakes. It's just like the whole look of all of that chrome kind of coming together. Uh, it's a really striking thing. Alternatively, you can mount the other gun like so, which uh, <laughs> just goes in the same slot. And uh, that looks nice too. I do really, really like how that looks, but uh, just got a soft spot for that chrome. What can I say? Alternatively, there is another little hidden weapon just in the back here. Now, if you kind of slide the, uh, the spoiler just out of the way, like so, uh, I'm always extra careful with the chrome on mine. I haven't had many major problems so far, but you just don't want to tempt fate, do you? Then there is this just kind of little gun that folds out like so, just uh, sort of comes through the middle of the spoiler. Now that might look a little bit odd, just kind of sticking out the back there and it only kind of points upwards as well, but it's very specifically a reference to the Generation 1 cartoon episode, More Than Meets the Eye, it's actually the pilot episode, and uh, in that Sunstreaker, of course, and this is a remold, uh, that this bit kind of pops up and the spoiler does split in that way as well in the cartoon uh, and he shoots off a couple of Seekers. So I've always thought that there's a really kind of fun little gimmick just integrated into there and uh, lo and behold they've kept it for spin out as well. Now as I've already mentioned there are a couple of ways to kind of modify the look of this toy particularly using these stickers and uh, you know I've already kind of mentioned the Countash uh, logo which can go on the spoiler just there but you've also got these little emblems just there which can go on his intakes and, uh, and again that's all designed to make it look much more like the original toy so uh, yeah that's pretty cool. I'm not going to be doing that on my copy though because as much as I do like the idea of the stickers I'm absolutely in love with this thing how it looks you know with the chrome and whatever else but uh, what we will do is we'll get it transformed into the kind of alternate mode which is to say is the more traditional Lamborghini uh, and see how that looks instead so uh, we're basically losing the intakes inside the car. So firstly what you want to do is just slide the doors up like so and then just fold these little panels out to the side they just kind of come out like that and when you've got both doors out of the way you can then just flip this back section up like so and the whole thing you can see I've still got a little bit of plastic in the inside just there they absolutely cover this thing in plastic but the whole thing just flips over like this it's actually one of my favorite pieces of design on any uh, masterpiece toy. Now it's a little bit fiddly just here because you just want to make sure that little gun that pops up from the back is in the right place so that you can kind of condense it down but then quite simply just kind of crunches into place like so Maybe crunch is the wrong word, right? It kind of implies something a bit disastrous, <laughs> but uh, but still, there you go. Very neatly just kind of tucks in like that. And then it's simply a matter of folding those panels back up into place. They just cl click in like so, and then the doors as well. Uh, and uh, lo and behold, you're left with a much cleaner uh, Lamborghini mold than you started with. I mean, just check that out. How simple is that, right? And it's the kind of thing that, you know, they could have done with an additional piece. I can imagine, like, you know, for example, uh, some hypothetical third party company achieving the same thing by having this being a removable piece and whatever else. But Takara Tomy have integrated it and it, it blows my mind every time how simple to execute the whole thing is. I absolutely love it. Now it's a feature that I've raved about many times over the years since Sunstreaker was released and you know whenever I'm kind of you know, have the opportunity to kind of bang on about it I will just because I think it's just absolutely superb uh, and the result is that you know you end up with a very different looking car form. Uh, now there is actually a little bit more to it because we're going to fold these lights away as well. Now literally all you do here is kind of fold these little panels up just these kind of back, uh, you know, tail lights, and then they just fold down uh, underneath like that, kind of revealing the uh, the different design, kind of more traditional tail light just there, uh, and then just do the same on the other side. There we go, and yeah, there it is, kind of more traditional looking Lamborghini, and uh, it's really, really something. Uh, do you know what? Again, I kind of reiterate that I actually think that this is a nicer vehicle mode than the MP12 mold, even which, and I love that toy. You know, I absolutely love the sideswipe mold, but I, you know, even in a kind of more traditional looking Lamborghini style. I think this has got it beat, personally. I mean, it's just so clean and just looks fantastic. Honestly, I'm just in love with it. Uh, and I really, really do love, again, that this uh, engine flip gimmick is integrated as well. Uh, and, you know, I do also think, I've already alluded to it, that uh, it just shows how Takara Tomy uh, just can't be touched when they get it as right as this. Uh, I mean that, honestly, it's it's not that it's not complex because it is. There, there's a huge amount of complexity going on here, but the the kind of ease of execution uh, and the simplicity of the engineering involved, you know, it makes it so simple to use, even though it is actually inherently complicated. That uh, it's just a joy, honestly, an absolute joy. And again, the result, just look at that, even this nice little detailing and everything there, which just felt, like, you know, like a essentially what is a gimmick. There's a lot gone into that. I just, yeah, very impressive indeed. Now I've heard it suggested that uh, this kind of, you know, more traditional mode is how they got um, Lamborghini on board for doing a, an officially licensed alt mode. I don't know if that's true or not. I think that's, you know, pure speculation from people on the internet. 
<laughs> so take it with a pinch of salt, maybe it's true, I don't really care because this is just beautiful. So the fact that it's included and you get both, great. I'm, I'm happy. We're not done yet, mind, because there's a couple more gimmicks to go with this car mode. Now firstly, if you kind of flip him over just here and press on these little buttons just on the uh, kind of underneath, just there, uh, then you'll find that actually it raises up his little headlights, which <laughs> again, the sort of um, execution on offer is uh, just really, really good. I mean, I would compare this to something like Fans Toys Spoiler, uh, which is their uh, breakdown, of course, which is also a Lamborghini Countach, and it has a similar uh, gimmick to this. It, Takara Tomy did it first on Sunstreaker, but uh, you know, it seeks to replicate it. But that, you can't execute this without sticking a little tool up into the underneath of the vehicle mode to try and activate it. Whereas here, you know, you saw how simple that is. And just look at that, it's just marvelous. The lights themselves look really, really gorgeous as well you've got a little bit of um kind of translucent plastic just there that really kind of offsets it it just yeah, just looks great now next you can also open this front section just there i mean it just literally pops up that little panel uh, and yes it's for transformation but it is again it's kind of replicating an element of the uh, the real world car uh, so that's something and then as we've already seen of course you can fold the doors up as well which <laughs> again is a, is a real world thing the actual lamborghini that's how the doors open you love it. Now, yes, there's no real world interior or anything like that. You know, this is not a Pinal Tech toy at the end of the day, but still it's a really nifty little feature. And I think adds something to this vehicle mode overall. I just think, yeah, it's great. So yeah, look, I'm sure I've raved about this guy more than enough already. It's an absolutely spectacular thing. I love it. What can I say? But it is time to do a few comparisons as well. So let's move them to one side just there. And of course, let's bring in the original version of the mold. This is MP39. Sunstreaker, uh, and then let's take a look at Masterpiece Cordon as well, uh, and that is all three versions represented here, and uh, what a trio, what a trio, it's just an absolute delight to see all three of them. Uh, really, really something. I do want to make one thing clear as well, that for the purposes of this comparison section of this video, I did a lot of transforming, okay? All of the toys that you're seeing here, and there's going to be a few more coming up, a few more <laughs> masterpiece and third-party toys, they were all in robot mode and all needed transforming, because that's just the kind of dedication that I have to this craft and to you watching this video. You are welcome, my friends. Anyway, all joking aside, it's a pretty spectacular showing, really, isn't it? I mean, I just, you know, I've already, already raved about uh, spin out enough but honestly all three of these guys all three of them smash success in my opinion I just think they've absolutely nailed it and in some ways actually I'm kind of looking at them now and thinking that spin out might actually be a favorite I mean I say that not lightly because honestly they are all gorgeous in their own way I love the yellow on Sunstreaker I love the white on Corden and his little uh, his little light bar just here as well is you know his little uh, light bar uh, bow tie that he's got in robot mode, but uh, they're all they're all really really gorgeous. Uh, but I don't know, there's just something about the red and the way it kind of interacts with the chrome and the black, the kind of black highlights that are going on here. It really sets it off nicely. I mean, actually, that is quite a difference from Sunstreaker because you know you can see along here along the bump, the sort of bumper section. You know, there is a lot more black going on there. There's a little license plate decal as well. Uh, you know, things like the little Lamborghini kind of, you know, it's not really the logo, but the little nub that's painted, it's not on here, it's just yellow. So there are kind of a number of stylistic differences that really do kind of set these uh, set these two figures apart, actually. Now, in fact, you could argue that Spin Out has a lot more in common with Corden than he does with Sunstreaker, actually, which is interesting to see. I mean, for one thing, they've both got this black, uh, you know, line at the top of the windshield and then a clear windshield it's itself instead of this blue tint on Sunstreaker with no line and that's true of the other windows as well. Uh, then actually the uh, the little kind of separated sections just here in between the windows is black and the uh, the, the wing mirrors are black on both Corden and Spinout uh, whereas they just yellow uh, all over Sunstreaker just there so that's a stylistic change. Uh, you know, actually the black where there is black on things like the, um, the windscreen wiper on Sunstreaker it's not a true black and that's true of these little sections just here as well. Uh, it's like a very, very dark gray, but still very prominently not black. That's also true along here, uh, whereas it is a definite black on both spin out and, uh, and cordon. And it's, you know, you get a lot more highlights at the back here as well, just here, that's the same. Uh, on uh, both spin out and Corden just here as well whereas actually this is all yellow these sections on Sunstreaker so Sunstreaker definitely chasing the the tune look a lot more obviously uh, but I, I think if they were to do a toyetic uh, you know toy style version of Sunstreaker it would look a lot more like this I suspect just yellow then of course the other major difference uh, with <laughs> with these two is that they've got no Autobot logo on here uh, now with the spin out again you do get some Autobot logos uh, in the set so you can if you want 
pop one on his uh, on his bonnet or wherever you prefer you know you could put it on his spoiler if you want wouldn't really fit but uh, it's your toy you do what you do what you want with it uh, but yeah obviously uh, with sunstreaker that's uh, it's not an option the, the tampo is just on there altogether so um so yeah ultimately though what can i say except i'm a huge fan of all three versions here and you know really it's it's collecting preferences isn't it some people don't like repaints or the, the kind of very nature of them uh you know or just kind of swear them off you know one version of the mold for me and all of that kind of jazz i love repaints i love seeing familiar designs that I really, really enjoy in weird and wonderful colours. And I think particularly here, where it's certainly warranted, you know, this is real pre-Transformers stuff, it's really kind of earned. Uh, you know, I would have been disappointed if they hadn't have done the red version, because it's it's where it all began. It's the very, very first car bot, as I say, from the Diaclone line, as, as we already mentioned. So to not do that in Masterpiece form when they had the mould, I, I would have been a little bit gutted, actually, to not see it come to fruition. And the fact that they've done it so nicely perfection. And you know the fact that this is a Diaclone homage, then of course there's another toy that we definitely need to compare it to, and that is MP12T Tiger Track. And uh, of course I've already talked about Tiger Track in previous videos, he was kind of the subject of a toy of the week at one point, uh, focusing on the character, and uh, really, really love this mold as well. And actually seeing the two of them together, it's really quite something. Uh, very, very special. I think, you know, the... I kind of, as I mentioned earlier, I really, I, I don't know why, I really like the look of the Sunstreaker design in red and the Sideswipe design in yellow. And uh, I, if I had my way, that's how the characters would be. I know, you know, there are people listening to that now going, that's heresy, but <laughs> no, it's, it's just personal preference at the end of the day. I, for me, this really, really works. Uh, and you know, it makes me very glad now that I never did apply an Autobot logo on Tiger Track. I was always kind of like, no, nah, I'll leave it, you know, and I'll kind of keep the option open, as it were. And, uh, you know, it looks great together. They both look really nice with, uh, with spin out and no logos, I think. But uh, they'd look just as good, I'm sure, with auto brands on them. But um, yeah, it, it stylistically works. The paint is tons better on spin out though. The one thing I will say about old Tiger Track is it kind of hails from the era of Masterpiece where the paint got a little bit sloppy around the edges occasionally. Uh, I mean it was the same on the original Sideswipe uh, which actually I uh, don't have in hand anymore but uh, you know the, the Tiger Track you, I do love it I love the colour but you can just see there is a little bit of paint slop on the windshield in certain areas uh, whereas actually now the paint on this thing is crisp beyond belief. And whilst I may not have the original Sideswipe anymore we do have the plus version here for comparison so that's uh, it's really good to see and uh, yeah two red Lamborghinis and of course this is the kind of toony style so it's got the um, blue tinted windshield and whatever else I am pleased that they didn't do that on spin out like I think it works uh, you know for the for the cartoon characters I like the, the blue windshields but um, for this one I'm pleased that they went with clear uh, but I do think that these guys look uh, look really really something together as well it's cool now I say that I don't have the original sideswipe anymore but actually that's not quite true because I do have this version uh, which is well if you're not familiar with it is the TF Expo variant which doesn't have an Autobot logo on the bonnet just there uh, which of course the original one does and uh, yes yeah, so there you go direct comparison of the two and actually it kind of works without the logo doesn't it if anything now of course I have flipped away the engine on spin out so that you can kind of get a, a more of a feel of, of how that looks in direct comparison with the more traditional uh, Lamborghini Countach mode on the uh, the X uh, TF Expo uh, Sideswipe or Lambo just there. Uh, that's a lot of terminology in one sentence, isn't it? If you can unpack that and understand it, then uh, good on you. Uh, but of course, the main difference between these two stylistically is still that this guy has a chrome uh, spoiler just there, whereas this has got the, the red that you would expect. Uh, but other than that, you know, it, it, it would be hard to kind of pick them apart. I mean, there's the, the kind of red bumper uh, just there on, um, sorry, the black bumper on spin out and the, the black wheel arches, which is definitely different to this. Um, but uh, it's surprising to see how close they look, considering that they're completely different designs. I mean, you know, spin out is maybe a little bit sleeker in areas, and uh, in some senses, actually, uh, sideswipe is a little bit tidier as well, in some ways. You know, it kind of maybe just clips together a little bit more flush, but uh, there's really not much in it, honestly. Which I guess is just another way of saying that, you know, Takara Tomy really do have this thing down. I mean, the, the, the kind of, you know, millimeter-esque measurements of this that, that we're talking about here, if there is a difference, it's, it's so sort of small or whatever else. And it just shows you that given how different these two designs are and what they have to transform into and what they go through, it really does blow my mind a little bit. What a great job they've done at representing this car form so well, twice over. But then let's bring in the uh, plus styled sideswipe yet again for a bit of a four way comparison. Of course, here you've got spin out, tiger track, sideswipe, and sunstreaker. And I love it. What can I say? It's a, it's a bit of a Lamborghini fest, isn't it? More countashes. Let's just bring in more of them. I can't get enough, quite clearly. 
Anyway, time for a more direct comparison with two versions of the same thing, and this here is Spin Out, this is the official toy with this one, which is Bad Cube Blaze. Remember that? Remember Bad Cube? And <laughs> yeah, they did uh, Sun Surge, of course, which was their take on Sunstreaker, uh, and this was the uh, red red repaint that they subsequently did. And uh, you know what? I really, really like this toy. I, it has its, uh, you know, its supporters, it has its detractors. Uh, a lot of people think it's too complicated to transform and whatever else, but I always liked it. I, I, it is fiddly, it is complicated, but I, I don't know, I enjoy it, what can I say? And uh, I actually th think that, you know, overall they did a great job with this vehicle mode as well. And I think the testament of that is looking at these two now and seeing that there's not that much in it. Do you know what I mean? The finish is nicer on the official toy for definite because it's got paint instead of just this red uh, kind of bare plastic for, for much of Bad Cube's effort. Uh, and you know, it's tidy around here and it does look nicer. The chrome is a little bit, you know, it's shinier definitely and just, you know, it looks more premium overall. Uh, although this version does have rubber tires, which I'm sure some people will like. Uh, but you know, actually in terms of the sculpt and whatever else, you could go either way. You know, I was always happy with this thing. I still think it looks really, really good. I think the uh, the super tuning intakes just here they look a little bit more they look a little bit more purposeful on this one than they do on here. They just kind of like look a bit like they're kind of stuck on. And then obviously you've got the engine flip gimmick as well, which really kind of elevates this thing. So overall, I definitely prefer the masterpiece. But you know, kudos to Bad Cube because even after what a good few years now of this toy being out. I think it still holds up pretty well. Anyway, it's been great fun looking at this car mode, but of course, let's get him transformed up into robot mode and check that out as well. Well, that's transformation done, and uh, I really, I really enjoy that conversion. You know, people will say different; they'll say it's too fiddly, too intricate, or whatever. But personally, I really enjoy it. What can I say? And I guess that's because even though it is fiddly and it is complicated, it's still fun. Uh, you know, there's still enough about it that feels intuitive. Maybe not quite intuitive. Maybe that's not the right word, but still, it's it's logical. You know, when when things click together, they go together nicely. Everything has its place. You're not left just kind of like fiddling around with the thing and hopelessly trying to kind of mash it together in any kind of form. Uh, I just really enjoy it, and I do think that there are a couple of elements to it that are super clever too. Now, without a doubt for me, one of those is the way that this chest piece kind of folds around because you've got the top of the car just there, and then it just kind of flips like that. And some people, you know, they really hate the, those kind of fake pieces uh, or whatever else. 
it really doesn't bother me. I mean, it's been a, a bit of a staple of the Masterpiece line since the very beginning. You know, MP1 has a fake grill and, uh, you know, various kind of trickery going on. And uh, I, I just couldn't care less about <laughs> whether it's fake parts or not. And uh, here I think it's really kind of necessary to have the right proportions for this chest. Uh, and, you know, obviously this is a fake windshield and everything just here. The real, the real windshield is tucked into the backpack. And uh, I think it's exceptionally clever, I love it. I mean, speaking of the backpack, obviously that's where most of the complexity goes on during the transformation, and it, yeah, it is sizable. It is a sizable backpack. I mean, I do, you know, often hear a few complaints about this design from people saying, oh, it's all kind of shoved into the back or whatever else. It's not something that bothers me, in all honesty. Like, the, there is an, I suppose, an air of complexity in terms of how this bit at the bottom with the spoiler kind of uh, is supposed to sit. But once you know what you're doing, honestly, it's absolutely fine. And really, for Sunstreaker's design, and now spin out, uh, you know, how much less of a backpack are you looking for, really? Because he's always had those intakes sitting there. You know, that's just part of the character model. It could probably be a little bit tidier, and indeed it is on, uh, on Bag Cube's effort, as we'll see. But, uh, you know, on the whole, I think this is absolutely fine in terms of backpack. I also really love the way that the legs and the feet come together. The way that these legs split out from the side of the car and fold around, I just think is magical. It's, it's a, so simple in its execution, but just equals such a great result. You know, the feet are the right size, and again, just referencing bad cubes, you know, you'll see the comparison in just a minute of what, how big those feet are by comparison, and, and these just look great. Uh, and I love the way that the kind of middle, uh, you know, middle section of the bonnet folds up, up behind his bum. It just works really well. Now, the result of all that twisting and turning is an absolutely marvellous thing. I mean, just look at that for a robot mode, right? It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I've always liked this design. I loved it from the first moment I saw it and Sunstreaker uh, and Corden. And then lo and behold, the red version, spin out, it's just as nice. I mean, I, you know, I know this is turning into a bit of a gush fest in general, this review, but what can I say? It's just a remarkably great toy uh, and just very pretty from every angle. I mean, yes, I've already kind of referenced the backpack, but it is remarkably kibble free actually on the whole. Do you know what I mean? It could be way, way worse. Uh, and I just think they've really cleaned up on this guy. It just looks absolutely superb, all things considered. Now, of course, that head sculpt is just absolutely superb, and it's uh, it's carried over from Corden. You know, it's uh, not the same as the original Sunstreaker mold, which was kind of much more cartoon accurate. This is a, definitely a take on the original toy, and it looks fantastic with the kind of more angular lines and everything else. Uh, and if anyone's wondering, yes, the original red Diaclone toy did have yellow earmuffs. <laughs> so yeah, that's absolutely accurate to the source. Really love these little sections on here. It's just a little uh, iconic part of uh, Sunstreaker's design, and originally, isn't it? What's interesting about those, of course, is that, uh, I mean, some of you may be aware of this, so, you know, feel free to skip ahead if you are, but of course on the original toy, those, uh, these pieces on the G1 toy could come out and actually go into uh, his, um, into his wrists. You could take the hands out and actually put those little sections kind of as missiles almost. And uh, then when they were writing the bios for Sunstreaker and Sideswipe, uh, you know, there's a reference in, obviously, in Sideswipe's bio to pile drivers, you know, which are not present on that toy, but then you, you always see in the cartoon and subsequently the masterpiece comes with pile drivers and every other side sideswipe toy ever since. Um, but actually the, the sort of purveying theory is that the tech specs were mixed up and it was actually these pieces on Sunstreaker which were kind of interpreted by Bob Budiansky who wrote the profiles as being pile drivers. And then the, the profiles got switched and Sunstreaker ended up with Sideswipes and vice versa, and that's why Sideswipe has pile drivers, and you get the idea. Anyway, it's just very difficult to talk about this toy and its origins without waffling on at least a little bit about some of that kind of history, right? Like it's uh, it's just sort of ingrained in this toy in many ways. Anyway, this uh, front section, all the chest here looks really, really nice. Paint, everything, it's just really on point. Fabulous. Love the little remolded sections on the legs with this kind of, you know, sort of greebly material here. That's, um, as I say, carried over from uh, Corden again, uh, but you know, not present on the original Sunstreaker design, so that's uh, it's good. So yeah, all things considered, very pretty toy, absolutely love it, bowled over by how it looks. What's really worth talking about with this guy though is the articulation, because uh, it comes from an era when Masterpiece toys had just about started to step up their game in terms of the articulation involved, and it's not, I'm not talking about like the, the old ones didn't have everything you needed, I mean they did, you know, stuff like Masterpiece Sideswipe and the other car bots were very articulated little things. It's just at this point, and with Megatron as well, MP36, uh, you know, they'd started to introduce uh, a lot more kind of nuance in how they articulated, a lot more range, subtle little extra joints in the articulation that just really make all the difference in terms of how they pose. So, uh, I mean, obviously, first of all here, you know, you've got decent range at the head. Uh, it is slightly impeded by the earmuffs, but 
uh, you know, you can get a decent range there as well. Uh, now the shoulders are really interesting because they will go all the way up and there's actually a sort of second hinge here. So it's on a ball joint at the main shoulder and a second hinge to give you that range. And that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about uh, to just kind of make sure that you get everything you need. Now this, um, this piece here is excellent because then you've also got this kind of butterfly joint that folds forward as well. So that is brilliant. So you can actually kind of uh, like clench his, um, his chest almost, you know, so pull the arms forward, which is just really, really great. Really love that. Uh, you then got bicep swivel and you've got decent range of bend uh, just there at the elbow that will actually go all the way up like so let's get that a little bit out of the way uh, so that's really really good and then the hands you get forward and back motion uh, at the wrist which I really really love uh, and then obviously there is wrist swivel as well and then the fingers are one molded piece uh, just there and uh, the thumb is separately molded as well so that's uh, that's all, all really really good stuff. Now I don't know if you noticed just there in that clip but uh, just a little bit of paint flecked off on my finger there so that's, um, that's unfortunate we'll have to see how we go with that. It's not seeming to be a major problem on the hands so far I mean it is <laughs> it's worth saying that it's kind of silly of Takara to kind of put paint in all of these joints and everything I mean it looks really nice to begin with but you're inevitably Inevitably going to get some paint rub uh, like in these tiny little pieces just there and the joints and the fingers and things like that it's, it's naturally going to happen I mean it, to be honest it's the same on Sunstreaker and on Cordon and I've not had any major problems with those so I don't anticipate the same here uh, red paint can be a little bit of a a little bit of a bugger, so we'll see how we go, but uh, fingers crossed it'll be okay. Which is interesting to see that just like on Sunstreaker, there are sections like here which is, uh, you know, which are unpainted versus the, the kind of predominant painted finish. Uh, so they could have done the hands unpainted, but I guess they, they figured it looks better. But as I say, it's not something that's been a major problem for me on Cordon or Sunstreaker, so I'm not overly worried about it. Anyway, back to articulation, and of course you've got a waist swivel just there, and you do have a bit of an ab crunch as well, actually. That's the one thing, there is an ab crunch. Uh, just there, which is probably all you need. It's not huge, but it's there. And uh, then the uh, the hips will go up like so, uh, all the way up actually really, really far. The rotation at the hips well past 90 degrees. So that's really, really nice. Uh, and really kind of nice ratchets on this as well. Soft, but strong, I would say. And uh, <laughs> uh, it goes well past the 90 degree bend at the knee as well. So very decent articulation there. And you get a lot of tilt in the leg also. Uh, and then as far as the ankles go, uh, there is very decent a uh, ankle tilt. And that's actually a bit of outward ankle tilt as well. So which is really nice for kind of certain poses. Uh, and just generally a lot of good articulation in the feet. All of which means that, as I say, this guy's articulation is just off the chain. I mean, it's a really, really fun toy to pose. And, you know, some of the, the kind of even more modern masterpieces like RC and things like that, they've really kind of continued this trend of just being super poseable action figures, which is, uh, I don't know, to me, in my mind, different than what we got with stuff like MP12, you know, with Sideswipe. Uh, because although the toys were articulated, you know, there was nothing particularly... Uh, out of the ordinary I suppose like it was good it was very very good but it was just it was exactly what you would have expected whereas for this guy and sort of onward from there it's really something I mean it's only fair to say that this dude does one of the best runs running poses that I've seen on any Transformers toy super stable as well on account of those feet and the heels which is just great uh, and the kind of outward ankle articulation that, uh, you know, really helps with that as well. Uh, so very pleased with that. And I just think it looks absolutely fantastic. Like it's super easy to pose this guy, uh, super easy to kind of have him stand stably as well. And uh, he just looks terrific. I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of how this toy articulates. Joints and everything all feel fantastic on mine as well. As I mentioned, as I already mentioned, you know, some lovely clicky ratchets in areas such as the knees. Uh, all of the joints in the arms feel good. It's, it's just a dream. So yeah, very pretty toy. Also a lot of fun to pick up and play with and handle and pose and all of that good stuff. So it's really kind of a, I don't know, get a man that can do you both type territory, isn't it? It's just uh, just wonderful. What can I say? An altogether wonderful robot mode. Now, of course, in terms of accessories, there are several guns that can be placed in his hands. Uh, first of which is this chrome little handheld blaster, which uh, just with the old peg and palm goes in quite securely. And I really like this one. I love the kind of little handheld pistol look. I think it uh, kind of suits him quite nicely. Uh, I like the, the chrome on this one, you know, same as Corden. Uh, it was actually, uh, it was a dark grey plastic originally on Sunstreaker, so this looks really nice. What's especially cool with this one is a cheeky bit of weapon storage. So if you firstly fold it over like so then just this panel inside his leg this is the uh, just the inner leg just there that just folds up there we go and there's this little peg just there peg hole uh, I should say and uh, get it the right way around it just pegs in just there and then that will oh you need to actually just adjust always forget that it's the, uh, that one out of the way as well and then fold that down peg it in 
and it actually stores inside his leg, which is a really cool little nifty feature. And then yeah, obviously the money shot from the instructions is always this kind of thing of him like reaching to grab it with this little fold up panel. And it's a bit of fun and it's not the kind of thing that you're going to use every day, but um, I really dig it. I think it's it's uh, it's cool. Alternatively, you've got this larger grey blaster, which uh, again is carried over from Sunstreaker, which can fit into either palm. And again, it's just the old peg in palm method. It uh, works very nicely. And you know, I think again, that looks really, really good and kind of gives him something nice to pose with. It works really, really well. And uh, I do like again that you can swivel the uh, or kind of tilt the wrists uh, outwardly like that which for me when posing them with his weapons uh, just really kind of gives that little extra mile I think it, uh, it works well and then that leaves this third gun here which again is really nicely chromed uh, and we first saw this one with Corden this didn't come with Sunstreaker actually now you can put it into his palm using the, the same peg and part method just there or you can actually just fold up that handle like so and then just fold his, uh, his little hand away underneath like that uh, then you can just peg it in sort of just clips in. Now, I've always found this one a little bit fiddly. There we go. Just clips in quite securely actually uh, over the uh, over the wrist uh, to kind of form uh, the same look, the kind of same missile launcher look that you got on the original Diaclone toy, which is really, really cool. Um, the only thing that is a bit of a bummer about it is that the, the fist is still fairly evident from underneath, like it's still always just that little bit too prominent maybe, but uh, still on the whole, I think it works, um, it works pretty well. And you know, as I say, it really does do a good job at kind of recalling to life that original Diaclone toy, or you know, the, the Generation 1 uh, Sunstreaker toy as well, you know, just with that uh, kind of missile launcher look. I really, really like it. And uh, you know, these little touches, stuff like that, the little head, uh, you know, all of those little kind of extra bits, the, the remolding and such, it really does kind of make me wonder if we'll get an MP39 uh, you know, toy version at some point, uh, a toy Sunstreaker. I was going to say MP39 Plus then, but of course that's this guy, which is, you know, the, the numbering is just always so inconsistent. It's just wild. Um, but yeah, who knows if we'll get a, a toy-esque Sunstreaker at some point. It'd be great to see. So yeah, it's a really strong showing for spin out, all things considered. But let's do a couple of, a couple of comparisons, shall we? Uh, now, firstly, here he is with MP39 that we've already looked at in his robot mode again. And uh, here is Masterpiece Corden as well. And uh, yeah, real joy seeing all three of them together. It's just an absolute dream. I did a, you know, I did a little video. Uh, I can't even remember which one it was now, but uh, I think it was a Toy of the Week video on Corden where I talked about uh, you know, how much I was looking forward to seeing these three together in toy form, finally. And uh, it's not disappointing. I can say it's definitely, definitely not disappointing. I guess it's because in my mind, they're just some of the, well, the, the mold itself is one of the most iconic things out of Transformers altogether, you know, or even pre-Transformers. And uh, seeing these two kind of Diaclone homages together, I mean, it would have felt incomplete without Spin Out or with, you know, without a red one, whatever you want to call it, uh, and just Corden. And uh, I just think they've done a, a bang up job with it altogether. Now, of course, as we talked about with the vehicle mode, so too in the robot mode, uh, yeah, there are more similarities between spin out and cordon actually and uh, because Sunstreaker in many ways is the outlier here you know he's the one with the lighter uh, kind of black you know the the off black plastic as it were as opposed to the other two which are much more of a kind of uh, you know dark crisp black uh, he's the one that doesn't have the toyetic head so that is actually the unusual one now he's got the kind of more anime flavored uh, noggin going on and uh, you know just other little kind of the the kind of paint apps and things like that the way that they're applied are much more consistent between spin out and cordon so it's very interesting to see well, speaking of those heads here's a bit of fun for you because of course what i've done here is removed spin out's head and actually replaced it with cordon's because he has the uh, the little red ears on the sides of his head so that kind of matches up with the rest of spin out's uh, color scheme and what that does is leave spin out's yellow head to go on sunstreaker <laughs> so there you go you get a kind of idea at least of what a, uh, a toyetic Sunstreaker would look like uh, with his, uh, his yellow earmuffs as I like to call them and uh, yeah I think that's kind of fun do you know what I mean it's not a hundred percent match because as I say the black is much more much more of a dark black than that on Sunstreaker itself but uh, but still a bit of a laugh in it anyway in terms of other comparisons here he is with MP12T Tiger Track again and of course these are these two are like the polar opposite of Sideswipe and Sunstreaker do you know what I mean they're the uh, Diaclone versions and therefore in their other colors and as I already kind of alluded to these could have actually been the color schemes that we got in Transformers but they uh, they weren't ultimately they got switched around uh, for the for the first time which is really really interesting and uh, yeah I, I really love seeing these two guys in these color schemes I think it's uh, really really great just look fantastic and the one thing I will say is a kind of direct comparison between these two molds is just how different they are I mean you know they do kind of work but at the same time 
really not, like in a funny way. Like I've, I've no doubt if we got a new uh, Sideswipe mold now, it would be much more in, kind of line, in line with what we see here in Sunstreaker. You can tell that they're kind of from different eras. Do you know what I mean? The way that this kind of slims down, uh, the proportions are better, everything else. Whereas this guy, you know, I, I do think that the uh, the chest here, for example, would, would kind of shrink a little bit. Uh, things like that. Is that this, this toy is ultimately, you know, it's got a lot more engineering involved. It's a lot more nuanced in many, many ways, but I still, Obviously love this thing. It's got tons of charm. Absolutely love it. So, uh, and, and you know, until we get a new Sideswipe mold, which I don't think is going to happen, a new Masterpiece Sideswipe mold, uh, this is this is it. Do you know what I mean? And I, I really, really don't think that's going to happen. Until it does. I, no, I really don't think it, it's going to happen ever. Until it does. No, it's not. I know. Well, I'm just going to stop now because it definitely won't. I think this is it. But uh, still, you know, it's nice to see them together. Until it does. And then, of course, here we've got the full gang. You've got Spin Out, Tiger Track, Sunstreaker and Sideswipe. And uh, yeah, you know, there might be variations between them and whatever else, but I, you know, I still have a lot of fun seeing this lineup. It's uh, it's nice to kind of have it finally done in masterpiece form. And then here we have a direct side by side with Bad Cube Blaze. And uh, as I say, I still really do have a lot of time for this toy, uh, but there's no doubt in my mind that Spin Out, the official Spin Out, is the better toy overall. I mean, you can see it really in the proportions in the robot mode. Uh, again, I, I would have defended it at the time. Do you know what I mean? I think they did a really nice job with it on the whole. But there's no doubt that yes, the feet are bigger uh, on account of how the the middle of the the, the bonnet kind of slides up behind the bum. Uh, you know, even the legs, things like that. I definitely do think that Takara Tomi have done the better job here overall, as, as perhaps is inevitable. But uh, but still, credit to Bad Cube, it's a good toy. And then in terms of other comparisons, here we are with a couple more. Uh, the Diaclone homages from the Takara Tomi Masterpiece line. Here we've got Blue Blue Streak, which is a real favourite of mine. Uh, uh, MT, uh, was it MP18B? Uh, real stunning toy, absolutely beautiful. And here we have uh, MP14C Clampdown, uh, who I also really love. Of course, it's another take on the Sideswipe mould, the Lambor mould. Uh, but done in clampdown colours, uh, and uh, yeah, just gorgeous. And then of course here we have Masterpiece Road Rage and Exhaust, just here, and uh, reworkings of Trax and Wheeljack, love both of these as well, and uh, lots of red and white isn't there in the Masterpiece Diaclone uh, toys, uh, the Diaclone range, you'd see a lot of red and white generally speaking, but uh, yeah these two are pretty breathtaking. And then here we have the wonderful Masterpiece Delta Magnus, who I just love, absolute jewel this thing it's just breathtaking so beautiful and, and of course that is ultra magnus in diaclone colors as well and uh, lo and behold well it's worth showing off at every available opportunity let's leave it at that and then here we have a couple of third party options for <laughs> similar diaclone uh, masterpiece style toys uh, you've got x transbots crosscut just here and then two ocular max toys uh, their um, uh, Red Mirage, of course, just here. And uh, this guy who was, I think, a TFCon exclusive from memory, uh, but the yellow version of their Trailbreaker, essentially, uh, with lots of lovely logos and all kinds of things over it. And uh, yeah, I really love how that looks. You may have noticed by now that I kind of like a masterpiece style Diaclone homage. So yeah, it's working well. Anyway, needless to say, goes really well with all of those guys and just looks absolutely breathtaking in his own right. Um, just in awe of this toy, honestly. I kind of knew what I was getting myself in for, obviously, because it's, uh, you know, it's my third third go at the mould, but still, it has not disappointed. In conclusion then, well, I'm sure I've gushed on enough already, haven't I? It's just a breathtaking toy. Fantastic alt mode, really, I think, fun transformation. Not everyone will agree, but hey, that's what I think anyway. And uh, just a sublime robot mode. What can I say? Go get this thing. If indeed Diaclone's your thing, or it's not, you just like pretty toys, it doesn't really matter. It's beautiful. What can I say? It's wholeheartedly a toot. Now, as I mentioned, I will go ahead and put a link to TF Source's listing for this dude in the video description, so if he does take your fancy, then you can check him out there just after we're done. Uh, it would also be really great if you could leave a like on the, uh, on the old video for me, please. That would be fantastic. And do subscribe if you haven't already. That's always helpful as well. Otherwise, that's it from me. So enjoy the rest of your day, and TTFN. TTFN.